Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Gerald Salente, editor of TrainsJournal.com. Welcome to the show, Gerald. Thanks for having me on, Jim. I hope that it will be a world-changing event. I'm sure you're hoping the same thing, and that's your Occupy Peace event on the 20th of this month. Can you maybe explain to us what that is and where it's going to happen? Well, it's going to happen here in Colonial Kingston, New York, at the most historic Four Corners in America, actually. It's the only place where there's a pre-Revolutionary War stone building on each corner. And it's right in view of the Kingston Courthouse, the location where the Constitution for New York State was written. This was the first capital of New York State. And then they changed it to Albany when the British came here and burnt the joint down back in 1777. So that Constitution, the reason I mention it, is that 90% of America's Constitution came from the Constitution that was written in this courthouse location. And we had four Supreme Court justices come from here as well, including John Jay. So the seeds of democracy were really sown here. And every one of the founding fathers, beginning with George Washington, a real warrior, not these little boys that talk tough like your Harper or Obama or Clintons or Bushes, that never fought a day in their lives or like Dick Cheney, you know, all these draft dodgers, and, and I was one too, but I admit it, you know, I wasn't going to go to Vietnam and get shot at, you know, for something I didn't understand. But these guys all talk tough and they wage war. Well, George Washington, a real warrior who led the troops, his farewell address, no foreign entanglements. Jefferson, Madison, Adams, Franklin, every one of the founding fathers, no foreign entanglements and the world was at war big time back then but the founding fathers knew it ain't our trip let's stay out of it and build the country so number one this is going to be a rally that kicks off occupypeace.us that's the website occupypeace.us and every country we if people want to do their own that's their business we made it specifically .us because it's a U.S. movement. And the first foundation of this movement, and it's not like anything ever done before in the peace movement, by the way, which the commentators say is dead, and we're reviving it, so I'm a trend forecaster, I'm going against the trend. And what we're doing is that we have a program in place. So it's not about just getting together, yelling, screaming, and hoping. This is a plan. Plan number one. Bring home all the troops, close those 120 to 150 bases around the world. Number two, put the troops to work rebuilding our rotted USA infrastructure rather than building highways in occupied countries like Afghanistan and Iraq. Number three, Congress has not voted to go to war since World War II. They give the commander in chief the authority to wage wars from Korea to Vietnam to Libya, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. They vote to give the commander, the commander, the, the right to fight, to, to send the boys and women to go get killed and kill others. So we're going to demand that they follow the Constitution. And the fourth element that makes it unique as well is that we're going to be putting in place direct democracy as they do in Switzerland. So we're working to get on each state a referendum, a ballot, that before Congress votes, we the people will tell Congress how to vote, to whether or not to go to war, because we pay for the war with our money and our lives. They don't send the Senate as son. So that's what Occupy Peace is. And just to put this into perspective, here we are now, just 14 years after 9-11. Go back and pick up Friday's New York Times, the self-proclaimed paper of record, or as I affectionately call it, considering what it is, the toilet paper of record. Look at the headlines. Democrats hand victory to Obama on pact with Iran. Pro-Israel group went all in but suffered stinging defeat. Cave yields addition to the human family tree. Swift apologies and harsh arrest of a tennis star. 
inquiries trial from a bridge to United Executives offices. In second GOP debate, Trump rivals seek points, not knockout. Hey, wait a minute. This is Friday, September 11th. I mean nothing about 9-11? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's something on 9-11. Go on to page A-17. And what do they have? A propaganda piece. 9-11 White House emails capture history in all its chaos. Capture history? How about caption distorted history? How about capturing propaganda? How about being the toilet paper of record? And that's the kind of crap that you write. So here you have it. After all these years, has anybody asked why the day attack America? Oh, you remember, I'm sure, Jim. You saw George Bush out there right after, you know, it happened. They hate us because of our freedom and liberty. Yeah, not because the United States sets up uh, dictatorships all over the Middle East. Not because of the Middle East policy with Israel. No, none of that has anything to do with anything. All it has to do with, and you remember, these people stay up at night trying to take us away from being able to vote. Vote? What? For one of the mafia, the Republicans or the Democrats, the Bloods of the Crips, the murders and thieves? And and that the, we won't have the freedom of religion. Oh, yeah, they really care. They're sitting out in their tents, man, smoking that opium, and they just want to attack here right away. And people buy the BS. Anybody with this has a, you know, that, that has an IQ over 73 wouldn't believe that baloney, but everybody bought it. So what we're doing with Occupy Peace is we're pushing for peace because since that time, all we've had is a war on terror. Any little false flag event, small minor incident, is another excuse to rob us of our rights and go invade another country. I've had enough. So that's why we're launching Occupy Peace, and it's a program for peace, not a wish for peace. Any presidential candidates expected to be there? No, we wouldn't have any of them here. The only one, by the way, that I would say that would be qualified would be uh, Chafee from Illinois and uh, from, excuse me, Rhode Island, former senator and governor. He's getting no press at all. But we don't want to politicize it in any way. And the only guy that pretends to be a peace candidate is Bernie Sanders. Uh, he voted against the Iraq War. Yeah, but he voted to fund every one of them, including the Iraq War. He voted, he was with Obama on the overthrow of Gaddafi, on Libya. And he. And there's a, a YouTube anybody could go to uh, when, when the Israelis were slaughtering over 2,000 people, Palestinians in Gaza last year yelling at a guy to shut up. And the same old line, oh, they're shooting rockets into Israel. Yeah, I think since 2000, I think 11 people have died from those so-called rockets coming out of Palestine. But they've killed several thousand Palestinians. Oh, there is no Palestine, I forgot. Uh, Golda Meir said there was no such place. And uh, they keep taking land under this guise of settlers, breaking every, every international law, Geneva Conventions, and they keep getting away with it. And when you talk about it and condemn it, they throw this two-bit line out there, like Bernie does, that you're an anti-Semite. Don't call me an anti-Semite. I call murderers murderers and thieves thieves. If you don't like it, that's your problem, Bernie. So he's another fraud, just like the rest of them. I'm an American, America first. If I'm going to give my allegiance and my money, I'm not going to give it to Israel. I'd give it to Italy first, and I won't give it to Italy. So that's why I've had it with this stuff. Anybody that wants to go support a foreign country, go. It's against everything America was founded upon. They are traitors to this country. They are traitors, every one of them, that get out there and pledge allegiance to a foreign country. I've had it. And that's why we're launching Occupy Peace. And we're putting our money behind this. This is our money. Yes, we have contributions. And anybody that wants to help us, we can use all we can get. Go to OccupyPeace.us and give whatever you want or do whatever you want. When people say the peace movement is dead, is it because we don't see the big rallies we saw back in the 60s against the Vietnam War? Yes, because people are doing nothing. There's hardly any protests at all. And they've discouraged them. And that's why what we have now, we have a, a, a mayor of Kingston, New York, that's given us permission to close down the streets. And as Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, if you go to his website, paulcraigroberts.org, and he's going to be addressing 
the pre-conference. We're having we're having uh, the the pre-rally. We're having a conference here in Colonial Kingston on the seventeenth, uh, eighteenth, and nineteenth. The rally's on the twentieth, and he was the former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Reagan, and he's as anti-war as I am, and even more so. Well, not more so. You can't be more so. You know, we were in the same camp. And he did a piece, it's paulcraigroberts.org, anyone interested in going there. And it says, fight for peace, don't fight for war. And he lays out how commentators are saying the peace movement is dead and how we're restoring it. So if anybody wants to attend the conference, there's still room. That's the uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th in Colonial Kingston. And the rally on the 20th. And by the way, no one in the mainstream media is talking about who caused the refugee crisis in the Middle East. How about war criminals, George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, Wolfowitz, and all the rest of the coalition of the killing. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda. I forgot about that other low life of a human being and using human being in a very derogatory way, Tony Blair shooting his little fat mouth off too. And again, no proof at all that Hussein had them. People like Scott Ritter and others saying that Hussein did not have them, and they launched the war anyway. One criminal activity after another. How about Saddam Hussein has to go, Gaddafi has to go, Assad has to go. Who are these people to launch wars in other countries? Well, since they got rid of Saddam and Gaddafi, there's been nothing but trouble. How come getting rid of these dictators didn't solve our problems? And what was our problem? Well, exactly, but they seem to think that if you get rid of dictators, somehow that's going to change the world. But I think the problem was they weren't their dictators. Exactly. Who are we? That's the whole point that I'm making. Who is any... what? How about if Gaddafi said, you got to get rid of that little clown you got up there playing President Harper? Who could put a jerk like that up there and run the country? Get rid of Obama. The guy lies about everything he says he's going to do as candidate Obama. From trade packs to closing Guantanamo on the first day in office. What if a foreign country like Putin said these kind of things? To, to get rid of a dictator you have in your country. Who are we to say what other countries should do? And that's what Occupy Peace is about. It's not, it's not about isolationism. It's about non-interventionism. Let us look at the Middle East and let us understand that the reason it's in this shape, it's at the end of World War I, when the murderous Brits, always very properly, you know, as one of the greatest slaughterers in the entire history of civilization, where the sun never set on the British Empire, started World War I, dismantled the Ottoman Empire, and created these countries that never existed before, and propped up their dictators. Like you have the Saudis, those are Saudi Arabia, oh, the king. The king, oh yeah, the royalty in, in Britain, they love kings and queens, don't they? So they made a king. Actually, I know how the king, a princess kissed a frog and the frog became a king. The murderous Saudis that are murdering people in Yemen who've done nothing to them. And it doesn't even make the news. And the United States is behind it as well. And so is the United Arab Emirates and the other murderers in the Arab League. So you're seeing all of this colonialism has never left the roots of these empires. It's like the French back in Mali. What are they doing? Up? We'll have more with Gerald Salente right after the break. Unbelievable harmonies, spectacular performance, Bird Dog and the Vintage Electric Band, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel in Oliver, October 2nd, in Kelowna, October 3rd. Buy online and save at OnTourTickets.com. More and more people are looking to the Internet for intelligent, riveting, and thought-provoking interviews. To advertise on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com, call 604-699-8600. 604-699-8600. In Goddard We Trust. Welcome back. We're speaking to Trans Journal Editor Gerald Salente. 
and his Occupy Peace movement on the 20th of this month in Kingston, New York. There's a Kingston in Canada, and I, and I think both Kingstons probably started at about the same time, didn't they? I don't know, but I hear Kingston in Canada is very beautiful. Well, I guess uh, like names, like kind of purpose and uh, appearance. Yeah. Yeah, Although the, in Canada, uh, the, the biggest uh, thing Kingston is known for is an ancient prison. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> Well, they should throw some of the war criminals in there. I don't know why there have not been war crime tribunals for the people that started the Iraq War based on fake information. Or how about lies? Could we find out? Who knew what when? And here the United States and its coalition of the killing is still in Iraq with bombs away, now into Syria, and just keeps spreading. Why is it traditionally, it seems, the American solution for any uh, international problem is to throw bombs on top of people? Has it solved anything? No, it only can create, you know, it's, it's, it's madness. It's, you have psychopaths and sociopaths in charge. Look, anybody should go to um, YouTube and put in Hillary Clinton, CBS, Gaddafi. And there she's being asked by CBS how she felt when they found out Gaddafi was dead and she straightens herself up and she said we came we saw he died <laughs> I'm not making it up man well didn't Gaddafi 10 years ago condemn terrorism and said from now on I'm going to use my oil money for peace not only that we when you talk about the migrant crisis he had cut a deal with Italy that no migrants would be flowing out of Libya into Europe and he kept his word and who also warned, and it was written on May 11th, I believe, uh, as they were overthrowing him, and uh, he was on the run, and it was in the Russian news. Uh, he had warned that NATO was now uh, basically uh, signing their own uh, death warrant in that there would be floods of immigrants or migrants coming into their countries as his country devolved into radical uh, militants. Uh, taking it over, and other countries in the sub-Sahara as well. And that's what you have. So he predicted it would happen. It's happening. There's no stopping this wave of immigra- migra- migrants, whether it's immigration in the United States or migrants coming throughout uh, Yemen, Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, Eritrea, Somalia, Sudan, Mali, Central African Republic, and now commodity prices collapsing, and I don't have to tell you up there in Canada, you know, all too well as you go into recession. Uh, these countries that were barely making it, Nigeria, Niger, and others that were relying on high commodity prices are now going into steep depressions and deep in debt, and the people are fleeing out looking to earn a living. And not only over there, but over here. They're coming out of Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, uh, Chile, uh, people looking to earn a buck as um, the commodity price is declining, their currencies are crashing, and you have the population swelling from, it took 100,000 years to put 1.6 billion people on the planet in 1900, from 100,000 years ago. From 1900 to now, we have 7.2 billion. So we've added well over 5 billion people in just a little over 100 years. So when you see these waves of migrants coming in, you know, this is like something that no history has never seen before, and there's no end in sight between the economic downturn and the geopolitical unrest. What do you say to people like Prime Minister Harper, who insists you can't cure the migrant crisis unless you keep bombing ISIS and bombing other people? Well, I would say that he's a sick SOB, and why would anybody in their right mind listen to him? And all they have is a track record of failure. Show me one success. Show me one success. Afghanistan, look, I look at history. There's two places in the world that have never been successfully invaded. Afghanistan and Vietnam. Vietnam has been fighting Chinese uh, invasion for 5,000 years. These, I have to tell you, I, I'm disgusted with these people. I don't even talk to them. Show me a success, I tell them. Stop shooting your fat mouth off and tell me what successes you've had. And the military are, have not had a victory since when? And now we got a new plan, I tell you. We got a new strategy. All they do is kill people and they have no success record. Could you or I get away with that? Having spent trillions on failure and then demanding more trillions for more failure? Who created ISIS? 
Would you be ISIS if your family was destroyed, your country was destroyed, you had no future, and is just living in hell? You think you'd turn a little radical? Why don't people try to understand that? When somebody bombs, tries to bomb you out of existence, you get a little angry. Yeah. Ask the Brits about how they felt when they were bombed during World War II. Yeah. They didn't quit. What did they do? <laughs> they fought back, and they fought back harder. Again, that's why we're launching Occupy Peace. The answer that sick people like little Harper have in their little minds is more killing to bring peace. How about minding your own business as your country's going into recession, Junior? How about fixing your own country, Harper? These disgusting people, I've had it with all of them. I've had it with the Obamas, the Clintons, the Bushes, the Harpers, the Blairs, the Camerons, the Sarkozy's, the Hollands. They're nothing but psychopaths and sociopaths. Murderers. Look what happened up in Canada when one guy goes crazy and kills a, a guard. They rob you of all your rights under the lives of ISIS and, and terrorism. And the people buy the BS. Bend over. Suck it up. And everybody bows down. Here comes the queen. Gerald, if people are interested in attending Occupy Peace, what should they do? Go to the website, OccupyPeace.us, OccupyPeace.us. All the information's there. The plan is there. The directions are there. How to participate is there. How to get here is there. It's all there. Because if we don't fight for peace, mark my words, we're going to be dying for war. You're seeing a repeat of the 1930s and 1940s. The crash of 29, currency wars, trade wars, world war. The panic of 08, currency wars, trade wars. World War coming soon. Gerald, thanks a lot for chatting with us. Thank you. Appreciate very much being on with you. My guest has been Gerald Salente, editor of TrendsJournal.com. You're listening to The Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Check out our very popular YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Comments about the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.